Hi, I'm Sithrith, and welcome to episode 73 of my Lotro Loremaster Let's Play. Again today, I have Leonor from Lotro Reporter with me as a special guest. Hello, minions. I am backup singer for today. Sithrith, as usual. Right. So... <laughs> Today, <laughs> we're going to be doing another skirmish, not Icy Crevasse, because that went okay. I say it went okay, because like the first half was terrible, but the second half was actually pretty good. Um, once I like got my wits about me. But today, no, we're not doing Prince, Defense of the Prince Pony. We're going to do Stand at Amun Sul. Um, Stand at Amun Sul. Yeah, I, it's, I think it's actually my favorite skirmish, probably because it's really easy. <laughs> I like it, um... It's quicker than, oh, geez, what's a uh, um, Gondaman? Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's pretty much the same fight, except you know, Gondaman just takes forever. It does. Some of the skirmishes Some like. Some stand at Amasul is pretty cool. Uh, it's actually really cool if you're a captain and you have a skirmish soldier, which is an archer, and your soldier, which is an archer. And you just feel like a an Not army like because there's also um, Candace or somebody with you who is yeah. also an archer, and it's just like so you really feel like captain. They're dead. <laughs> they're dead. <laughs> yep, I can confirm this because I have a captain whose skirmish soldier is also an archer and uses what's the archer. What's the name pet. of your uh, what's the name of your skirmish soldier? Uh, this one right now. Yeah. Archer. <laughs> because it's an archer. Greetings. Oh. And you named it after the highly mm, popular no. cartoon show, right? I don't like Archer the TV show, I'm sorry. I know that makes me a terrible person or something, but... You know what else I don't like? Firefly. I, I, Deal with it. What? I don't like Firefly! Oh, end the show. <laughs> <laughs> did you watch them all or did you stop halfway? Um, because it seems like the haters stop halfway. I I didn't watch I didn't stop halfway, but I didn't watch the whole series. I watched almost all of the episodes. Mm -hmm. Except for like one or two. Okay. That's fair. Yeah, so I gave the show a fair shot, and I just didn't like it. And sometimes I feel like the only person on the planet. It seems like um the the first couple of episodes are kind of dry. Mm. And then after that they start getting into more character stuff. Like Jane, Jane's pretty fun on that show. He's just this, you know, bounty hunter guy, who's uh, who's kind of dumb. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, stuff like that shines through. And then, and then people start relating to the characters around that time. Right. So whenever I ask somebody about that, they're like, eh, "I like the show." And it's like, "Well, did you get past episode four? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, you, you gave it a fair shot. So cool. Yep. Right, so things that aren't Firefly. Um, things. Yeah, I got a question for you real quick. What's oh, yeah. your name? Okay, yeah. Um, uh, Sithrith. Yes. Sith uh, okay. Where? When did you pick that name? Did you just pick that name when you first joined Lotro, or did you have that name somewhere else before you came into this game? I actually made that name up for Lotro. Um, my first character ever actually was an elf on Brandywine named Lyris, mm. and that was when I did not understand. I This was my first online game ever, and so I don't know why I'm picking up a torch. None of the campfires are out yet. Um, but I didn't understand online games or MMOs, so I didn't know what servers were and how they worked and how you had to pick the same server to play those same characters. Mm, yeah. So I... I uh, the first time I played, I played this level 5 elf on Brandywine, and then the second time I went to play, I clicked Winfola, and I was like, oh my god, I lost my elf, where'd it go? Oh, it's ruined. <laughs> and it was terrible. And then I, I think after that I realized I'm supposed to click the same thing every time, so I just ended up staying on Winfola. So I made it, uh, the second character I ever made was my captain, Sithrith, and I just used the naming conventions <laughs> that are listed when you make characters. <laughs> So it's really not anything terribly exciting. Um, okay, because unfortunately, uh, all these years that you have been playing, you have been pronouncing it wrong. I am fully aware of that, but <laughs> it's been like I've been pronouncing it this way for so long that it doesn't matter. 
<laughs> I, I'm, I'm not exactly sure if it's supposed to be Kithrith well, or Kythrith. Well, yeah, that's the thing. I've I've spent more time than I'd like to admit trying to figure out how exactly I am supposed to <laughs> pronounce it. Um, I actually, I'm an English major, and I even contemplated taking the name to my medieval literature professor to get her to pronounce it in Old English, which is what Rohirrim is based on. So, right. but I was like, no way, that is stupid. I'm not going to talk to my English professor, because she'll think I'm crazy. <laughs> um... So then she'll, she'll inevitably ask, what does this mean? And I'll have to be like, well, it's my character in a game about Lord of the Rings. And she'll have to be like, what are you doing with your life? Um, <laughs> so that never happened. But yeah, I've... I've Some things I've looked at, uh, it's supposed to be pronounced like Kitrit. Like you're not supposed to pronounce the th, like the th. Uh -huh. But some places, um, it's like Kitrit, or it's Kithrith. And, but then, some, like, according to the game, you're, like, I am pronouncing it correctly, actually, because uh -huh. the Rohirrim people, um, with names that have C's in them, the C is pronounced like, sit, like the C-I, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there, there are some special occasions where that we do say, you know, the, the, the soft C. Right, yeah, like, um, I think Now, there's... what the rules are for that, I don't know. I right. just know that, like, 80% of the time, the C is hard, like a K. Yeah. Like, I know there's one, I think it's a Thane, or somebody, in West Rohan named Arsil, and it's A-R-C-I-L. So I mm -hmm. use that as reasoning to say that I'm pronouncing <laughs> Sidrith right. Even if I'm not. Because <laughs> I know they, <laughs> like, the, the voice actors pronounce a lot of things really wrong. Like, I cannot stand how they say Rohirrim. Like no, just no, stop. Mm -hmm. The Rohirrim need fantastic your help. Fantastic here, by the way. Well, yeah, because this is way easy skirmish. I could do this skirmish in my sleep. Mm hmm. Because like, I used to spam the skirmish all the time on my <laughs> um my rune keeper. I didn't actually like do hardly any quests on my rune keeper. I just leveled up by skirmishing. Because I was kind of sick of leveling through various areas, and so I was like, I'm just going to use skirmishes. And then I got sick of all the skirmishes, and so I had to start questing again. <laughs> but that was back when uh, skirmishes were first introduced, and they had they gave 25% more XP than they currently give. So mm -hmm. it was a bit more doable then. So for your characters, like your main characters, do you just pretty much focus on one skirmish soldier, or do you focus on a couple for situations? I basically only ever have one skirmish soldier for each character because I can't be bothered to <laughs> use uh, marks and medallions and stuff for multiple skirmish soldiers per character because I like to use my skirmish uh, marks and medallions for cosmetics because that's okay. the important thing in life. <laughs> I, I know this is kind of a show thing here, the, you know, the, the, the stuff that I'm seeing you record and stuff with, but what's that timer up on the corner? I feel like I'm Snake from Escape, Escape from L.A. and my going, my head's going to explode as soon as Wait, the timer Wait, in the upper down. which corner? It's it's up on the left-hand corner. Oh, yeah. Six, um, that one, won't six, be visible nine. in the show, so people will be like, what are you talking about? But, um, yeah, there's some orange numbers, and basically the furthest leftmost number is the current um, frame, rate? frame rate, and then the second one is the recording frame rate. Okay, good. <laughs> yep. It was scaring me. <laughs> yep, and as long as that's orange, it's recording. If it turns green, that means we are not recording, and there's a problem. Mm -hmm. Which okay. is something I try to notice, but sometimes don't, and uh, there's <coughs> multiple occasions where I've um, clicked record, and then it's recorded for like a minute, and then stopped recording because I ran out of disk space, and I wasted like a whole hour. Oh, yeah. So that happens. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. But luckily okay. that's not happening right now, so that's good. I'll, I'll give you a quick question mm -hmm. uh, while you're just knocking out the skirmish. Um, uh, are you? Have you ever heard about what happened with Star Wars Galaxies? Yes, I am aware of the new game experience. Okay. Uh, what's, uh, if Turbine did something along the lines of Star Wars Galaxies where they ended up merging classes together, like Wardens to the Guard, 
lore masters to the rune keepers and other things and decided to replace the combat system with a more action based combat system more along the lines of like Neverwinter or Elder um, Scrolls. Elder Scrolls, you know, just more mashy mash the button type of combats. Um would you say with the game? Um well it's hard to say. I'd probably like a lot of people would be very angry and I wouldn't be surprised if pretty much everybody I know left. I'd probably stick around just a little bit just to be able to keep exploring Middle Earth as they release it. Mm -hmm. Like depending on like when this hypothetical thing happens and if they've, you know, released all of Middle Earth yet. Um but, yeah, I think that's pretty much the only reason I would stick around is just to be able to keep exploring Middle Earth, but I wouldn't probably do anything except maybe play with cosmetics. Because <laughs> that's the important thing in life. That, that, um, was, um, that was actually, you make a good point. Uh, with the, they, they're opening up Middle Earth. Uh, they said that they were going to try and just focus and open up Middle Earth, right? Like they're going to be making a lot of the areas now. Um, yeah. Well, like, they've been talking about for Update 14, and, um, I think we talked about it in Lord Claire's News this past weekend. Um, there was some posts by Rowan, the executive producer, on mm -hmm. the forums, and he was saying that they are focusing for... They, they do actually have plans for after the ring gets destroyed. Um, right. So we're going to be working on uh, dealing with the terrors of Minas Morgul, and also the scouring of the Shire, which will be interesting. So they are planning yes. on doing like multiple things it's not just okay the rings destroyed end game go home everybody right so they do seem to have plans at least to do more of middle earth and that'll be interesting to see mm -hmm. I, I think uh in one of the twitch streams that they were talking about that people were saying that they haven't really focused on the world that much lately it's always been like small yeah they've small been really releases. focusing on the story a lot lately like yeah in previous so, years they were kind of doing a lot of expansion -y, like not expansion like expansion packs but like expansion of the world so yeah like Forokel like Forokel like and, and um, yeah Ended Waith and stuff like that mm -hmm. but um and like it was all I, tied into the epic story but um kind of in nebulous ways I suppose right so yeah, I think now they're that very story War of the Ring driven. Right. I, I think that they're going to be opening up some of those other areas now. I don't know if the Epic Book is going to be going through those places, but I know that question in particular. It was like, well, you know, you guys haven't done anything, you know, on, on expanding the world a little bit. Mm. You've always just been focusing on the book. And uh, he's, I, I think it was Rowan who said that they realize that and, and, and they are planning on expanding the world a little bit oh, yeah. a little bit more instead of just focusing on you know books and going right. straight to Mordor well that's good to know because yeah I do like the kind of more meandery way to get to Mordor I don't like the straight shot because you know mm -hmm. it's like you want to savor the story you don't want to just you know get it over with yeah exactly especially uh, since I, we're going to be getting so many updates this year I kind of figured that we, uh, I, I kind of figured that it would might might have been a really good idea to, from this point on, just kind of like fill out the world, mm. you know, not all of it, but you know, uh, more of it, and then when time comes, they can put down quest hubs, raid hubs, you know, mm. and 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 put that stuff out there. Um, it was just kind of an idea, though. I really didn't think about it that much. But then I heard Rowan talking about it on the Twitch stream. I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like he is doing something like that. <laughs> oh, this is going to get back to me. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so that should be pretty cool. Um, I know people have been asking for, like, the South Farthing and, like, connecting uh, Arid Luin to the rest of. Eridor by not just ports and stuff. I want ruin. Yeah, that'd be cool. I, I want the, the 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 right area over there on the map, though, because that's the unexplored area. And uh, Tolkien mentions it a couple of times, you know, very briefly. Right. Uh, the, that's where, uh, uh, if you remember the movies, the uh, the, the blue guys wizards. from the the blue, those were the blue wizards went over there, and the men from the east came to help out in, uh, uh, to help out. 
Sauron mm -hmm. battle in front of um, Minas Tirith, I think. Right. Is, yeah. Yep. Well, they also came from Harad as well. Yes. Like the elephants and from Harad. Like that whole area right there, and I'm sure Turbine's aware of this too. Mm -hmm. All If they go over there, they have such a clean slate to work with. It's very true. They could pretty much do it's anything It's kind of like how with Angmar, they, they just had... Like, there's a little bit of lore around Angmar, and it was pretty much open from there. Yep. So and the, I think they did pretty well with that, too. Mm-hmm. That's where we got that whole wonderful Amarthiel and Mordrimbor thing. So I finished the skirmish with no problems. I didn't even die. That was awesome. No problem. You, they, you, you killed everything. You didn't die. You did perfect. You did, you did very well. That was awesome. I couldn't make fun of you or anything. <laughs> yep. I actually did the right <laughs> things this time. I even had my skirmish soldier out the whole time. How many collars do you have? Holy cow. Uh, let's see. A lot, actually. Three? Um, <laughs> what outfit am I wearing? So let me hide the cloak. So there's two in the in the chest piece that I have. There's like mm -hmm. an under one and the over one. And then if I turn on my cloak, there's like this extra really big poofy one. So three, <laughs> yes. My neck is nice and warm. You're like that skeetball <laughs> machine that they have at Chuck E. Cheese. You just throw a ball up in there and get some points. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think that's about it for uh, episode 73. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And um, you should go watch Little Reporter because Leonor does that. I and do that. Yeah. So watch that. Yeah. Thanks for watching this. And uh, see watch you around. More. Yeah, watch more of this. Watch more of that. Watch it twice. Yeah. Ha, 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 ha.